What do you know about modern day slavery? I have literally no clue about it. <laughs> um, to be honest, I don't really know much. Um, very little, which I know is really, really bad because it's a pretty serious issue. So. Um, I can think of sweatshops, probably modern slavery. Um, I think the only kind of things I really know about are things like sex trafficking and so people being taken from country to country and exploited in that Working way. Working at WH Smith and they pay you 5 40 an hour. <laughs> For me, I think it's the corporate one. I feel like uh, you are under the uh, constant impression of like, what do you say, like pleasing your bosses. The yeah, emblem has links to slavery and whether how the university should try and disassociate itself or like address it. But no, I'm not as caught up as I should be. Yeah. Bristol is well known for its historic links to slavery. From the 1690s, Bristol ships began shipping West African slaves to the West Indies. By the 1730s, Bristol had overtaken London to become the UK's premier slaving port, and by the end of the century, the slave trade dominated Bristol's foreign trade economy. The slave trade was abolished in 1807, and slavery itself outlawed throughout the British Empire in 1834. However, the vestiges of Bristol's profits from the slave trade remain. From Will's Memorial to Tyndall's Park, Colney Hall to the Fry Building, each of these places are named after families who indirectly or directly benefited from Bristol's slave trade. Even the university crest still bears the insignia of its main benefactors, the Will's, Colton and Fry families, all of whom directly profited from slave trading to fund the university's establishment. In the 21st century, Bristol continues to grapple with its colonial past. In particular, the university has begun to seriously investigate its links into the city's slave trade. In October 2019, the university appointed a new black history professor, Olivette Otelle. Less than a year later, Professor Otelle resigned, citing how the University of Bristol used her as a human shield to put a plaster over its historic links to slavery. Meanwhile, the Colston statue was torn down during a Black Lives Matter protest, and debates continued around the university's colonial history. By February 2022, the Colston statue was placed in the museum and a consultation began about the university's crest and the names of its buildings. With these debates going on in the background, modern slavery in Bristol often gets equated with historic slavery. And this is one reason why academics working on modern slavery often disagree with the term modern slavery itself. When people talk about modern slavery, fundamentally what they are doing is using the memory, the imagery, the narratives around the transatlantic slave trade to refer to a range of um, circumstances or phenomena today which they deem comparable. And this can often refer to issues ranging from agricultural labour through to people working in car wash bases through to, to nail salons or um, other um, areas of, of social and economic life. My name is Dr Sam Ochery, I'm a senior lecturer in sociology and I have worked on a range of phenomena discursively presented as modern slavery over the last 10 years at least. Part of the problem, or indeed one of the major problems with the construct or the term modern slavery has to do with, with this definition. Because very often it's used in relation to um, things which have already got international legal definitions. So people would say, well, human trafficking is modern slavery, or child labour is modern slavery, or forced labour is modern slavery. Well, these are things that are already defined. So if one is discussing child labour, you could just stick with, you know, the, the term child labour. And, and problem, therefore, is that modern slavery as um, a movable feast, um, pretty much everything and anything that constitutes exploitation, again, another nebulous term, is presented as modern slavery. And if you're trying to tackle a problem, Having clarity in terms of its definition and its scope is vitally important. For those who are um, supportive of the term and its use, the notion of slavery is a very emotive one. 
It has been extremely successful in terms of garnering public attention to it. But it also presents a range of problems, because not least because of the definitional issue, but also because of the kinds of understanding and the sorts of responses which it provides to the public. I would argue that the use of the term modern slavery is unhelpful, firstly because it creates a hierarchy um, in terms of human exploitation and human rights concerns when we should be tackling all forms of human rights violations. Um, it presents us with cases deemed to be the most egregious or the most extreme instead of drawing our attention to the everyday forms of dehumanization and inequality. What this does therefore, it, 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 it conveniently fulfills the wishes or if you want the agendas of politicians who may not necessarily be committed to tackling human rights in the most comprehensive manner. We can and we should address all forms of inequality, exploitation, and we've managed to do that before the advent of the modern slavery agenda, which as I say, is creating divisions between what are often one and the same form of inequality, one and the same form of human rights um, um, violations. Even though academics like Dr Cherry argue against the usage of the term modern slavery, the charity sector and local governments continue to use this term in their work. For the more specialised organisations, modern slavery is generally broken down into subcategories – human trafficking, sexual exploitation, criminal exploitation and forced labour. Many of these categories overlap, intersect and remain highly complex. A teenager in Bristol coerced by a gang into drugs trafficking will be a victim of forced labour, criminal exploitation and potentially human trafficking all at the same time. The UK utilises a referral system called the National Referral Mechanism, a framework for identifying and referring potential victims of modern slavery. The Office for National Statistics utilises data from the system to trace modern slavery within the UK. The government currently estimates that there are approximately 10,000 victims of modern slavery in the UK today. However, UK charities calculate that there are approximately 100,000 modern slaves. This discrepancy is largely thanks to differences in definition, one of the issues Dr Cherry points out. There are also differences in the way the data from charities and the national referral mechanism is interpreted. However, anti-slavery charities continue to argue that slavery in the UK is at an all-time high, with numbers increasing. Between June 2018 and 2019, the Samaritans supported 2,251 potential victims. Out of these victims, 48% had experienced labour exploitation and 39% had experienced sexual exploitation. In these cases, prosecution is not always easy. Based off the most recent data, for adults, around 68% of prosecutions end in conviction, whereas for children, only around 50% of prosecutions end in conviction. Often, there is simply just not enough evidence to prosecute. In Bristol, modern slavery is far from just numbers. In June 2022, a Bristolian couple were found guilty of human trafficking and forced labour. Over a period of 10 years, they had kept over 40 Slovakian immigrants in a house in Brentree. These people were forced to work in a car wash in Southmead and suffered horrendous abuse. There are many charities working against modern exploitation in the UK. One of these is Unseen UK, a charity with its headquarters in Bristol's Hyde Market. My name is Will Robinson and I'm the Senior Fundraising Officer at Unseen. We're an anti-slavery charity which is based in Bristol and operates across the whole of the UK. When we define modern slavery at Unseen, we say that it is the exploitation of people against their free will for the purpose of financial gain. It's capable of affecting men, women and children, people of all different ages and all different backgrounds as well. And it really is an umbrella title, so it can cover so many different types of exploitation. 
In the last 10 years, we've seen a lot of change around the legislation towards modern slavery. In 2015, we had the Modern Slavery Act, which was really good for survivors of exploitation. It brought together a lot of existing legislation, offering more support for survivors, and it also introduced the Independent Anti-Slavery Commissioner, who at the time was Dame Sarah Thornton. Since 2015, however, there has been a decline in the legislation offering support for survivors of modern slavery. The post of Independent Anti-Slavery Commissioner has no longer been filled, and this has been the case for the past year or so now. The slavery industry is one of the fastest growing international crimes and it's actually the second largest in the world right now. Currently it's estimated that the slavery industry can bring in approximately $150 billion every single year. The reality is that modern slavery is a complex, loaded term applied in a variety of contexts. Its usage is controversial and perhaps unhelpful, prompting confusion among students and the general public alike. Regardless, the charity sector and the academic realm agree that global inequality is growing, and with it the potential for increasing human exploitation. In Bristol, the challenge remains to spot the signs of exploitation, as it could happen to anyone, anywhere, at any time. <laughs>